Joining me now is Brian Desmond to talk about Azure Active Directory. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey, good to be here. So you've been a Microsoft MVP for a very long time. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about where you come from, what you used to do with AD, and what you do these days? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so these days, I uh, spend most of my time implementing, uh, really leading a team for that matter, that uh, kind of designs and implements uh, Microsoft security and identity tools uh, at a company called Ravenswood Technology Group. Um, so I'm based in Chicago, and uh, like you said, my you know, kind of background historically was around around the Active Directory space. Wrote a couple of books about that, and did uh, did quite a bit of work there. And and we continue to, uh, you know, despite what uh, Microsoft may may say about AD's uh, uh, lifetime, we continue to uh, to spend a lot of time there. Uh, as uh, everybody uh, everybody has that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think AD is going anywhere just yet, um, but there's a big push for people to move to the cloud where they can. But I, I haven't came across many organizations that are entirely getting rid of, of their Active Directory. Yeah, we certainly, uh, you know, people want to talk about it, but, you know, outside of the smallest organizations, that's that's a, a long ways away. You know, there's certainly things we can do to start removing certain dependencies, but chances are uh, most people are going to have it for the foreseeable future. So on the show today, we were going to talk about Azure AD, especially the, the premium features, uh, because you're going to be doing a tech talk, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, a little bit later in the show today, in a few weeks' time. Uh, talking about some of the, the real core features uh, that are absolutely valuable to, to every organization. And uh, before we go into some of the, the premium features, I'm uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes encounter organizations who have bought just Office 365. So they bought maybe E3 licenses, and in, in some cases, Office 365 E5, so they've got advanced compliance, they've got voice functionality, but they've not got what was traditionally the EMS features or Azure AD Premium, or they haven't moved to that Microsoft 365 set of SKUs yet. So if, you, if you're in that boat at the moment, what, what can you do before you try and make the case for, for buying premium licenses? Well, I mean, obviously you have all the, you know, the rich collaboration and you know, kind of Office 365 features as we uh, know them, but from you know an identity management and security perspective, that's that's really where Azure AD Premium is a uh, you know pretty significant value add. And certainly for the vast majority of our customers, we see them investing in that or you know trying to to build similar capabilities to the extent they can with other products that that can bolt on, if you will. Yeah, have you seen some of the newer features that have came along, like security defaults? And if so, what do you think of them? Um, I mean, security defaults are, you know, you think about, uh, you know, secure by default being something that, you know, has been uh, the really important uh, it's paradigm, you might say, for Microsoft for, you know, decades now. Um, and uh, the, that really needed to extend to to Azure AD and Office 365 and so forth. So the idea with security defaults, certainly with any new tenant that's being provisioned, there there's some baselines uh, that, that can be put in place that can defend the, against a lot of the, the most common attacks uh, that are out there. But the flip side is that it's, it's very binary in the on or off sense, and you can't really customize it. And that's, yeah. where, uh, that's where some of the Azure AD premium features really come into play. And I have had customers who haven't got Azure AD Premium who, uh, because the, because security defaults or switching on MFA is very much a on or off setting, either for a user or with security defaults for the whole tenant, and you don't get a lot of flexibility, that they've, they've hesitated in doing that. Uh, and I, I'm always concerned about this, but uh, and I'm coming from the Office 365 side, but from the Azure AD side, you know, what, what advice would you have for for people who say, I don't want to switch on MFA. I think it'll be too much hassle for my users because I've not got conditional access. Uh, I mean, I think we're past the point where MFA is a discussion point. Like that's really just something that everybody has to be doing. Uh, there's certainly different ways to approach that. There's there's lots of different ways to reduce the hassle factor that's involved in it. But 
Um, you know, I think the days of, oh, people won't understand this or it's, it's too much work. Everybody has an online bank account or, you know, pays a utility bill or something. And they, and they all have some, you know, form or fashion of, of MFA. So there's, I think at this point, not really scenarios where people aren't familiar with it. Um, and, you know, certainly from an Azure AD premium perspective, there are capabilities to reduce the number of MFA prompts that people have, which is a, a really yeah. good practice anyways, because the last thing you want to do is, is train folks to anytime they get that that prompt or that, that call on their phone to just automatically hit approve. You really want that to be an, oh, did I trigger this action? And should I approve this versus, you know, I've seen this 17 times already today. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent point, isn't it? If you've not got Azure AD premium, and you're right. It, there's not a discussion point about whether you should do it. You absolutely should uh, switch on MFA. And that's that. That's simply that's the slide. You know, it doesn't need to say anything else. But there are things like hybrid as your AD join that for those customers who are worried that people are going to get prompts all over the machine every time they open a different app, where they they want to make sure there's not a fatigue of just pressing accept, accept, accept every time it pops up. That even without conditional access, they can mitigate against that at least from a machine level. And I've seen customers who were very hesitant about rolling it out. And they they, they were planning on buying Azure AD Premium. And last year, one customer, the pandemic hit, and they had to shift everybody to work remotely. And they switched this on, and they said, I should have done it before. I should have done it before. I don't know why we, we hesitated so much. Because you're right, people... People do know how to, to work the tech. We've got to trust our, our users a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, and I think the you know COVID nineteen situation is a, a good example here. I mean, obviously, there's uh, it's been you know horrible for many people for you know many reasons, but from a you know, technical transformation perspective, it's uh, it's been pretty good for a lot of organizations to um, you know really drive forward some of these difficult changes that have have needed to happen and. It, you know, but suddenly it, it needed to happen now. There was no more time to talk about it. And so, we, you know, we've seen with many of our customers just a, uh, you know, significant uh, significant transformation as a, as a result of this. And it sounds like you have too. Yeah. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking at Azure AD Premium, in your session, you're going to talk in depth about some of the most valuable features that are worth paying for. Uh, but I was interested to get, uh, a view from you on what are the most valuable differences between Azure AD Premium Plan 1, which is the core that for our listeners includes conditional access and so on. It includes the, 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 the majority of features. Then you've got Plan 2, which up-levels it a bit. And I, I, I always forget the difference between the two. And I was wondering if you can give us a bit of an overview as to what the core difference is and what the biggest benefits are between those two SKUs from Microsoft. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the the biggest for you know most organizations, the the biggest differentiator there that the the plan to step up gets you is all about data and risk. Um, so there, there's a capability called identity protection that unlocks with uh, Azure AD Premium P2, and that's all about knowing. Uh, not just who's signed in and where they've signed in from, did they do MFA, that sort of thing, but um, knowing how does Microsoft factor the risk score, if you will, for that for that user and for that sign-in so that we can now make adaptive decisions on on access control. Um, and they, they have a, a yeah. vast and you know, enormously complicated machine learning system that, that analyzes those sign-ins on the fly to be able to score those from a, a risk perspective. And then they also have just troves of data that perform what are called offline detections that, that can also assess risk for, uh, for a user. You know, one that I like to talk about that, that's very tangible, because some of these are very complicated to kind of understand, well, how did we get to high, medium, or low risk? Um, but this notion that, um, if you use password hash synchronization, which we recommend that every customer should have enabled, 
um, Microsoft's actually able to take those password hashes that you synchronize and compare those against the equivalent hash against leaked credential dumps that make it onto the internet. We all read about these hacks and, and compromises that happen in these you know vast troves of credentials that, that come along with it. And if they're able to find a match, so my work account and work password matches a credential that was leaked on the internet from another site, they're actually able to score that as my me having a high risk user account on the spot. Maybe that sends an email or creates an incident in a, a ticketing system. But then I can also take automated action, which could either be blocking that until a human intervenes or um, doing something like forcing a password reset and MFA the next time the user signs in so they can really remediate that themselves. Um, so that's that's all part of identity protection and it is the, the main thing there. And then there's also a, a number of capabilities around privileged access management and access governance. Yeah. Uh, but, but identity protection is really the one that, that jumps out to me. So is Azure AD Premium enough on its own to, to add on without uh, technologies like Intune in particular? Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. I think we see most uh, organizations, certainly that I work with, you know, get Azure AD Premium as part of a bundle like the Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite or as yeah. part of Microsoft 365. You know, from an EMS perspective, typically as soon as you need two of the workloads uh, from a cost perspective, buying it a la carte no longer makes sense. Um, you know, the the key thing with Intune that, that really plugs into Azure AD from a conditional access perspective is being able to measure the state of a device, whether that's a mobile device like my iPhone or a desktop PC or laptop, um, and then factor that into that conditional access decision. So maybe we have a application that has some really sensitive data in it. We only want you to come to it from a corporate machine, and we want to make sure that it's policy compliant. And that's where that Intune signal or factor uh, comes into play versus before we would only be able to say, well, is it a corporate device or not? We could answer that question, but we couldn't answer a question about the health of the device. That's the, the biggest one I come across where people want to look at the health of the, the device or say, is it an enrolled device and is it compliant? And if they've got another MDM solution, they say, oh, so I, I need Intune to go with that or I need to be using Intune in some way to, to enable that. As you say, you know, a lot of people do buy them together. So the point being, it makes a lot of sense to buy them together if you want to be able to assess whether somebody should access the estate based on conditions that include enrollment and device compliance. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Microsoft has been starting to open that device compliance uh, metric, if you will, to, to third parties. There are some other MDM solutions that can now kind of flip that bit, so to speak. But um, historically, that, that's that been a driver for Intune. Uh, and there's some other technologies that I've seen used a lot more, especially with bring your own device or accessing things remotely, like um, MCAS session policies, which uh, I use for working uh, my employer's uh, tenant when I'm working from home on a personal device. Uh, what, what do you think of technologies like that? Are they worthwhile add-ons? Yeah, so, and, uh, you know, the session proxying with MCAS, so MCAS is Microsoft's Cloud App Security Broker, or CASB, and that, that session proxying makes it so that rather than me going to SharePoint Online directly by going to, you know, mytenant.sharepoint.com, and so I'm redirected through MCAS through the, this proxying system, which means that every single uh, action I take and transaction and so forth can be audited and, and logged and also interacted with in real time through through there. Um, so we, we certainly have customers that are deploying this from a maturity perspective, though there's a certain level of kind of base maturity that you need with some of the base capabilities before you can elevate to being able to really take advantage of some of those capabilities where I can say, you know, rather than just always needing a compliant device to access SharePoint, maybe it's okay to come from your home PC, but if you're going to access anything that has confidential data or restricted data, in it, then we're going to want you to uh, come from your your work machine. And, and MCAS can do that, and it can do that on the fly, which is really interesting. And it can do that for non-Microsoft workloads as well. For example, we use yeah. it with our CRM system. Um, but the the amount of work you need to do to be able to get to the point where you can start taking advantage of that is substantially higher. So for many organizations, they're not necessarily there yet on the the journey where they can can really take advantage of that in a in a really meaningful way. 
So the, the last thing before we go, we uh, mentioned your tech session uh, that's coming up on the 1st of April. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the kind of the genesis of that is we're really going to dive into some of what I consider the top Azure AD premium features and talk a little bit about what they are, you know, what's potentially some of the value they can add to your organization. And I think even more importantly, on top of that is how can you roll those out uh, quickly and in a in an effective manner so that you can start taking advantage of the investment that you've made in the the premium service. And uh, one last thing, how can people find you online? How can people find me online? Um, yes. Are you on Twitter? Are you on the web? Do you have a blog? Yeah, uh, I am on Twitter, although I have not tweeted in a very long time. But uh, many people follow me in suspense waiting for uh, for that <laughs> next uh, next tweet. Uh, LinkedIn as well. I've been starting to uh, to you know, share more content uh, there. And then we have a blog uh, on my organization's website, ravenswoodtechnology.com that uh, I'm contributing to as well as a number of our other uh, members of our team. So there's a lot of kind of technical thought leadership in the, the Microsoft space that uh, is being posted there. Cheers. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Yeah, my pleasure.